today we have our senior college fair. We have our high school seniors uh, who are graduating this year, the class of 2023 Jordan year, as they call it. They're here to meet with recruiters from across uh, the country. We have recruiters from across the state and the region here to admit our scholars, to have our students find out more about their college. And they're just here to meet our students, and our students are here to meet them. Today has been a very fun day. I've been talking to people. This is a very good idea to have this for students, you know, so they can very take school um, very seriously. The admission process is crucial because they have a certain amount of students. They need to fill out a certain amount of paperwork so they can actually reserve your spot on campus. And if you don't reserve that spot on campus now, you'll be lost later on and you won't have a spot. I don't think this is something that they would normally get to experience. So for the district to put on something like this, it's just an amazing opportunity for our kids to network and be exposed to things they might not get to see otherwise. A lot of kids are trying to get into college, and it's like a great opportunity for them to do applications, and it's easy, and the applications are also free. And you get to learn about the schools and the colleges and like the campus and all. Most importantly, I think it gives scholars a chance to see what different universities are around, in state, out of state just exposure in general. Well, it's so important that we have our college fair because this is one time our students have the opportunity during the school day to meet with the uh, college recruiters and to find out more information about the colleges and what they have available so they'll have something to look forward to after they finish high school and something to move on to and what's their next steps and now they can learn more about different colleges and learn about admissions requirements and get to meet the people they need to work with throughout this school year to get accepted. What we've done is brought doll making, which is pretty much a dying art, uh, to the Jackson Public School System through the after school program and the summer program. And these children are making dolls from scratch. These are porcelain dolls. They do the pouring. I fire them for them. They do the cleaning. Uh, we make bodies for them. The children stuff their bodies. They polish the dolls. Uh, I help them with the painting of the dolls, and then we put the dolls together. We're working in partnership with Jackson Public Schools in order to provide young children with experience and um, provision to all different types of coding and robotics training. As you can see here, you have multiple children playing with robots that they built on their own. Um, that will be tapping into the engineering aspect of majority of the um, STEAM um, program. And in the beginning of this program, we let the children um, learn how to code their own video game on a website called Scratch, where they can code video games. And we spent through four days um, on that said program. And these children who had never really heard of computer programming or coding got their first hands-on experience with that. We have been focusing on the theme of Voyage to Excellence. And so this summer, students have had the opportunity to focus heavily on different countries. Um, the first week they focused on Mexico, and this week they're focusing on France. If you see, they're um, doing art activities right now with the Eiffel Tower. And so getting, giving them the opportunity to learn more about different cultures and other areas in the world is very important for our scholars to expose scholars to other forms of learning, thinking outside of the box, um, expressing their creativity, things of that nature, getting them um, acclimated to what they might see in middle school and what they might have an opportunity to do in high school, gaining scholarships, and just giving them exposure to other um, forms of art and enrichment is a great thing. The goal of the A3 summer camp is to ensure equitable learning opportunities that facilitate the development of our scholars' skills, knowledge, voice, and confidence. Our scholars have been exposed to robust enrichment opportunities as well as learning opportunities that prepare them for the next school year. We call these opportunities acceleration as the goal is to prepare our scholars for the next school year.
this summer I decided to teach a little body percussion to the students, so we started off learning um, by using our hands, uh, coordination with the uh, theme music. When well, we started with the Pink Panther, we've done Uptown Funk, and we're using our hands, patting, we are stomping, and uh, just using the body as an in instrument. Music does a lot of things with emotions and behavior and everything, so yes, I am all for teaching children music. And I'll tell you about part two in a minute, but let's talk a little bit about vagrancy laws. Vagrancy laws could be anything. Walk this is an opportunity for them to be able to see firsthand what their ancestors went through um, during the civil rights movement. Um, it is often um, expressed, but students have to be able to see, touch, smell, taste things in order to get a clear understanding of the importance of certain things. And so it is important for them to be able to see the, the murals and the paintings and the pictures and photos and, and sculptures and videos of actually what happened, of what their great grandparents went through um, as they were fighting um, segregation in the South. For students to not just see art, but to actually be able to experience it. There is a lot of cultural experiences that is here. Um, I'm very excited about the students be able to see, for example, the Great Migration Exhibit. It's a wonderful exhibit that tells the story of us, um, how the South, how families in the South moved to the North, and it just talked about how that affected um, families. Uh, even now. And so students will have a chance to not just read it in a book. Some of the things that we're studying in their summer reading books, for example, they'll get a chance to actually see it and touch it and feel it. And so this is a really good experience for our students. We are out here at the Environmental Learning Center this morning, and we have had an excellent discussion about agriculture, uh, forestry, poultry, um, as you can see, uh, vegetation. And what we have learned actually aligns with uh, some of the college and career readiness standards that students are exposed to in the regular school year, as well as the A3 summer camp. So we're having a lot of fun out here. And it's giving these students a chance to enhance and enrich their education across the summer to keep their learning going. Greetings to the entire Jackson Public Schools community. I'm coming to you today from the newly renovated Media Center here at Callaway High School. During our convocation back in August, I mentioned that we would have some big news to share about our district. We're crunching numbers and checking our data and rechecking it and checking it with the other people and all of that kind of business, but just know that any way you slice it, we are killing the game. Well, it gives me great pleasure to finally announce that Jackson Public Schools has advanced from a D to a C-rated school district, according to the Mississippi Department of Education's accountability system. The system rates schools and districts using grades A through F based on state test scores and graduation rates and several other factors. When accountability ratings were last given prior to the pandemic, we had earned a D rating, which was an improvement from the year prior. While we're super excited about our improvements as a district as a whole, several of our JPS schools, Callaway High School in particular, improved performance by two or more letter grades. You can find more information about our performance on our website and specifically on the About Us page if you'll click there. Family, this is a really important milestone for us. With our C rating, we're no longer considered a low performing district. Some might ask, well, how did you do it? I'll tell you, we achieved this performance level by strategically focusing our work, by mobilizing our talented educators to support scholars in and out of the classrooms, and by holding ourselves accountable for delivering with excellence. Here are just a few highlights related to our improved performance. First, we've achieved the highest graduation rate that we've seen in recent history, nearly 85%.
We've raised our performance in both English language arts and mathematics back to pre-pandemic levels, effectively regaining the ground that we had lost during the pandemic. And we've achieved some of the highest growth rates on the state tests that we've ever accomplished. Now, have we arrived? Absolutely not. But our commitment to excellence is definitely paying off. I'm so proud of Jackson Public Schools, of our scholars, our educators, our leaders, our support staff, parents and families, even our community and partners. We've accomplished so, so much and we've overcome so much. The pandemic, floods, ice storms, senseless violence, and even this ongoing water crisis. But we've overcome them. And now we're aiming even higher to the next performance level. I know that we'll get there. How? As one district, moving in one direction, marching towards excellence. Thank you all and congratulations. This is the ninth year of Touch a Truck. Yes, and we're back in person, so we're very thrilled about that. Today we have over 720 kids that have registered for our Field Trip Friday, which is free due to our Handy Helper donations from our lead members. So, and we're very excited about that too as well. I think giving an experience for children to come out and actually see and the equipment and learn about everything from medical equipment to trucking to helicopters and just seeing what's out there is really exciting. We also engage with STEM tents. We've got lots of activities, a literacy tent. We want to make sure that we are really looking at social development and early literacy and letting kids just see, you know, and explore and touch and climb um, and everyone just gets to interact. <laughs> where they get to experience a lot of hands-on. They get a chance to touch all the trucks, uh, get to ask all the uh, people their professions and what they do for a living, and the kids are having an awesome time. Carly told me that I should read Sky Color. Carly, can you give me one good reason why I should read Sky Color? Because it's good, and it's got a lot of color. You like color? She was about to answer him when out jumped the little red chicken, and she said, "Don't talk to strangers." So Little Red Riding Hood did the end. No. Is that how the story is? They're coming in the door uh, just with such excitement, watching their eyes light up and the expressions on their faces is just overwhelming. I, I think I think Ms. Chandra and I both were just so excited, giving high fives. Uh, they haven't been able to go to a lot of field trips over the last two years, and so being able to have this event in person, outside, and allowing the kids to be together uh, and to encourage them and to support their schools has been really uplifting. We're really honored to be a part of it. here to celebrate summer reading. We have brand new titles, and so we want to just introduce that to our scholars, our parents, and our JPS community. This is truly for the summer reading program. It tried to rain on our parade, but we did not have it. In JPS, we are here, we are resilient, and we are here to celebrate literacy. Well, with the block party, um, the parents are going to come in. They are going to visit each station by feeder parent, and all the feeder parents are participating. And they have on their table different types of activities to encourage reading during the summer months. They have the summer reading laws. They um, have just different types of ways and activities to, you know, to keep the students reading during the summer months. We want to continue that reading during the summer because we have that loss of learning. And so we don't want that. We want to continue on to read and just kind of develop a love for reading. Um, we planned together and we decided to have a book parade and a block party to celebrate our new titles. This is a new year of titles 
these titles will be here for five years. And so with that being said, we, we try to come up with a bang at all times. And so to push reading and to put our new titles out there. diversity in our title that we have, different variety. We also wanted to kind of change the requirements. Before, you had to read all books in order to be considered a reader. But this year, if you're in grades 4 through 12, you can read other texts. So if you want to read a poem, an essay, um, anything, we are encouraging you to read that as long as a required text. All of our feeder patterns, they have come together. They are excited. We have books that we're giving away. We have face painting. We just want kids to understand that we can have fun and read at the same time. I'm so excited about where Jackson Public Schools is going in the next few years. But I will tell you, ultimately, what it looks like is breaking down all of the barriers that exist between our scholars and wonderful, bright futures. We see our graduation rate increasing. We see many more of our scholars on pathways to college and career. I think the best part of being a pre-K teacher in JPS is the opportunity to work with a lot of like-minded professionals that kind of have the same goals. You have supportive staff, supportive central office who will help you. It's just a great place to be. This is a place where any team member can be a rock star. We're really challenging these titles and positions. If you've got a great idea, we want to hear it. I'm proud to work in JPS because I know where we've been and I know where we're going. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. We are JPS. We are JPS. We. We. We are JPS. We are JPS. I'm Janet Wallace. I am the district's manager of teacher support and retention. We know from experience that new teachers can feel overwhelmed and isolated. In JPS, we are really intentional about providing opportunities for teachers to grow professionally and personally. This is through professional development or, you know, on the job coaching and feedback or providing a mentor. My name is Alina Dayo and I'm a fourth grade teacher here at Bates Elementary School. This is my first year teaching at JPS. I come from a country called Kazakhstan. I came here to the Delta, Mississippi to go to an HBCU, Mississippi Valley State University. After I graduated from Valley, got certified as a teacher. Before I started teaching this year in GPS, I felt a little nervous and kind of lost. The support that I have from my administration, the support that I have from district uh, new teacher induction programs are wonderful. They help me grow, they help me develop and push forward on a daily basis. New teachers tell me all the time how excited they are to participate in our monthly meetings. They always tell me that it's right on time and it's a breath of fresh air that you know takes them away from their everyday duties that they have at the school. Now I feel confident, I feel optimistic, I know what I'm doing, I know where I can get help from. If you're considering teaching in JPS, you're coming to a family. You're going to feel support. You're going to feel the strength of community behind you. This is why I teach at JPS. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. We are JPS. We are JPS. We. We. We are JPS. We are JPS. Today we have our senior college fair. We have our high school seniors uh, who are graduating this year, the class of 2023, Jordan year as they call it. They're here to meet with recruiters from across uh, the country. We have recruiters from across the state and the region here to admit our scholars, to have our students find out more about their college. 
And they're just here to meet our students, and our students are here to meet them. Today has been a very fun day. I've been talking to people. This is a very good idea to have this for students, you know, so they can very take school um, very seriously. The admission process is crucial because they have a certain amount of students. They need to fill out a certain amount of paperwork so they can actually reserve your spot on campus. And if you don't reserve that spot on campus now, you'll be lost later on and you won't have a spot. I don't think this is something that they would normally get to experience. So for the district to put on something like this, it's just an amazing opportunity for our kids to network and be exposed to things they might not get to see otherwise. A lot of kids are trying to get into college, and it's like a great opportunity for them to do applications, and it's easy, and applications are also free. And you get to learn about the schools and the colleges and like the campus and all. Most importantly, I think it gives scholars a chance to see what different universities are around, in state, out of state just exposure in general. Well, it's so important that we have our college fair because this is one time our students have the opportunity during the school day to meet with the uh, college recruiters and to find out more information about the colleges and what they have available so they'll have something to look forward to after they finish high school and something to move on to and what's their next steps and now they can learn more about different colleges and learn about admissions requirements and get to meet the people they need to work with throughout this school year to get accepted. Black History Museum going on here at People's Middle School, giving the kids an opportunity to look at those different individuals here within our state who've done great things with, uh, in the African American community. How the African American church played a role in the black community, starting from when the church was, black church was established, all the way up to how it did the civil rights movement as well how the church played a vital part in the black community. We have information on Black History Month. Carter G. Wilson, the founder of the Black History. We will have highlight those different people. Even we give information on Juneteenth. Give kids information when Juneteenth was started, as well as pictures about that. We just got information on our uh, historically black uh, sororities and fraternities right here, representing uh, eight of the Divine Nine, and with information, giving kids background information on the different sororities and fraternities. So when they get ready to go to college, you know, they get an insight of what it's all about. Also, our HBCUs, listing all our HBCUs for the information and history line, from the beginning, talking about how HBCUs got start established after the Civil War, and different quotes from different black famous Americans, people that they know. Okay. Hello. <laughs> oh, girl. All right. King is here. Hey, King. How you doing? How was that? Good. She said she was going to be Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The Jackson Public Schools System meeting is now called to order. We have a quorum. We have six, two, three, four, five, six persons present and one person. No. Five, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one person on the phone. Dr. Harrison will be on the uh, phone uh, tonight. One on the line. Uh, that's right. The president is traveling on fam family business tonight. We've all had an opportunity to see the agenda for tonight. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. There are no nays, there being none. The motion is approved. We have all had an opportunity to review the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the September 20th regular board meeting mi mi minutes and the September 26th special board meeting? Is there a motion? 
So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No nays, there being none. The motion is approved. Now we are down to the superintendent's report. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Vice President Hilliard. Uh, good evening, board members to our JPS administrators and staff and scholars and parents and community partners. Thank you all for being with us here this evening or listening to us. Uh, we'll begin as we typically do with um, the uh, highlights reel from our instructional television team. Jackson Public Schools' commitment to excellence in education pays off in a big way. The results of the 2021-22 Mississippi Academic Assessment Test show that student performance in English, Math, Science, and U.S. History in grades 3 through 8 and in high schools improved, advancing the Jackson Public School District as a whole by a letter grade from a D to a C-rated school district. We achieved this performance level by strategically focusing our work by mobilizing our talented educators to support scholars in and out of the classrooms, and by holding ourselves accountable for delivering with excellence. And special recognition goes to Lester Elementary, McWilly Elementary, and Wells APAC Elementary, which ranked in the top 20 in the state. And Obama Elementary School ranked as the state's top elementary school. Plus, two outstanding leaders in Jackson Public Schools education are honored for their remarkable service. Dr. Sarah Pearson Harper, principal of McWilly Elementary, which ranks 13th among the state's top elementary schools. And Principal John Johnson of Obama Elementary School, coming in as the state's number one elementary school. These two leaders will serve on the Mississippi Principal Advisory Council, where they can share their success stories and help other administrators. And congratulations to Blackburn Middle School. Scholars and teachers accepted a two-week plastic bottle recycle challenge from the Juanita Sims Doty Foundation. This is a community service piece, um, and that's something that our students need in order to be competitive globally. During this time, three students and one teacher received special recognition and monetary prizes for their hard work. Blackburn collected 25,608 plastic water bottles, setting an example on one way to protect the environment and to keep the city of Jackson beautiful. For more information about Jackson Public Schools, please visit our website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us. Follow us on Facebook at Jackson Public Schools, on Twitter at JPS District, Comcast Channels 18 and 19, and YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash JPS ITV. As always, we want to thank our instructional television team for keeping us updated with happenings around JPS, uh, the school district. Board members, we continue uh, to celebrate our district's improvement to a C rating based on the state's A through F accountability system. I um, want to reiterate a few of the highlights related to our improved performance. Uh, one, we've achieved the highest graduation rate that we've seen in recent history, nearly 85%, and we're really proud of that and excited to continue to, to build on, on that success with our graduation rate. Uh, we've raised our performance in English language arts and in mathematics back to pre-pandemic levels, effectively regaining the ground that we had lost. And, you know, there's been lots of conversation around uh, lost opportunities for learning and lost ground um, and gaps and all of that sort of thing. So we're really excited that we're um, closing that gap and, and using this as a, um, and use this past year as a, a real launching point and, um, and a, a time for accelerated growth, which is also super important. We've also achieved just some of the highest growth that we've ever seen on the state test. And um, we'll talk a bit more later as we present some of the data from the state um, uh, uh, test from the spring. Um, but we are really excited about the amount of growth that we've seen. And we know that this is, again, a launching uh, pad and an opportunity for us to continue to deliver on excellence for our scholars. 
Also, just to, to note, all of our JPS high schools improved at least one letter grade, and several schools increased two or more letter grades. And so we're excited about that, and you'll hear a little bit more about some of that improvement by school. Four of our JPS elementary schools ranked in the top 20. And uh, as you've already heard, Obama Elementary School ranked number one, Lester Elementary School ranked number five, McWillie Elementary ranked number 13, and Wells APAC Elementary ranked number 16. Um, we're super excited about our improvements as a district, and I'll ask Dr. Cormack, our Deputy Superintendent, to join us now to further highlight some of the achievements made by individual <coughs> schools. And he'll share a little bit more on that. Good evening, uh, evening. to Mrs. Evening. Hilliard, evening. Uh, Dr. Green, members of the board, and our JPS community. We are super excited to celebrate the accomplishment of our schools that are growing and progressing uh, toward our vision of excellence for all. Um, Mr. Johnson is prepared to share uh, some slides, and what I would like to do is, as you can see, we have a, a pretty full house this evening. We'd like to acknowledge many of our principal leaders who are here with us this evening. And as their school names are called, we ask that they stand and that we give each list a huge round of applause for the tremendous leadership that they have demonstrated um, through this last academic year and every year. Um, our A-rated schools are first. Uh, we have Barack Obama IB Elementary School, Casey Elementary School, John Hopkins Elementary, Key Elementary, Lester Elementary, McWillie Elementary, Wells APAC Elementary, Bailey APAC Middle School, and Northwest Middle School. Let's give a big round of applause. tremendous work and, and many of these schools uh, have their assistant principals also represented so we're excited that you brought the team to celebrate this because it is truly a team effort. Next we'll acknowledge our B-rated schools. We start with Dawson Elementary, Galloway Elementary, Lake Elementary, Pecan Park Elementary School, Shirley Elementary, Span Elementary, Timberline Elementary, People's Middle School and Callaway High School. Give us a big round of applause. In each of those instances, we have schools that have made multiple jumps, and we'll acknowledge that in just a bit. Our C rated schools Baker Elementary, Clausell Elementary, Isabel Elementary, Johnson Elementary School. McLeod Elementary, North Jackson Elementary, Smith Elementary, Walton Elementary, Wilkins Elementary, Forest Hill High School, Jim Hill High School, Murrah High School. Big round of applause. Next, we'd like to acknowledge some movers. These are the schools that we're calling our pot of gold schools. They both achieved an A and maintained an A through the pandemic. They are Barack Obama Elementary School, Casey Elementary School, Key Elementary School, Lester Elementary School, Wells APAC Elementary School, Bailey APAC Middle School, and Northwest IB Middle School. found the secret sauce. <laughs> we next acknowledge a list of schools that have climbed the ladder, meaning that they increased their accountability points by 10 or more, uh, but maintained a current level. This is really important to acknowledge those schools that have <laughs> sticked and stay with a, a, some set of strategies, but also grown within that level. And so we want to acknowledge growth at all levels. They are North Jackson Elementary School, Span Elementary School, Clausell Elementary School, Raines Elementary School, Lake Elementary School, Shirley Elementary School, Brinkley Middle School, and Cardozo Middle School. Big round of applause. Right. 
<laughs> and then we uh, have a category we call our mountain mover schools. These are schools that move one or more accountability levels, and we're very, very proud of this. Um, many schools with uh, two or more uh, jumps, and so we're quite excited about what that means for scholar achievement and performance. Boyd Elementary School. Boyd. Boyd. <laughs> Galloway <laughs> Elementary School. Isabel Elementary School. McWillie Elementary School. You see, they got a lot of pride for their colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oak Forest Elementary School. Smith <laughs> Elementary School. Walton Elementary School. Green Elementary School. John Hopkins Elementary School. Johnson Elementary School. Timberline Elementary School. Wilkins Elementary School. Peoples Middle School. Witten Middle School. Callaway High School. Forest Hill High School. Jim Hill High School. Lanier High School. Hey. Murrah High School. Provine High School. And Wingfield High School. High schools in there. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All seven represented in our mountain climbers, so we're real excited about that. Amazing. And acknowledging our best in the state. These are top 10 schools recognized by achievement, by performance. And so you can see uh, where we rank uh, within the state uh, in addition to in these particular areas. Barack Obama Elementary School, first in state and recognized uh, first in state for third grade ELA and fourth grade ELA. Fourth in state for fifth grade ELA, third in state for fourth grade math, and second in state for fifth grade mm -hmm. math. Let's give him a <laughs> Lester, while being recognized as the fifth overall elementary school, was also 10th in state for third grade ELA. A big hand. <laughs> Wells APAC, 16th in state overall, and 4th in state for 4th grade ELA, and 8th in state for 5th grade ELA. And then Northwest IB Middle School, 1st in state uh, in 7th grade ELA, 4th in state for 7th grade math. Big hand there. And Bailey APAC Middle School, third in state in seventh grade ELA, and first in state in eighth grade ELA. <laughs> and as we have acknowledged, uh, we're very excited to uh, have a top ranked elementary school in the state, Barack Obama Magnet. Eight uh, is our uh, number one school, elementary school <coughs> overall, uh, with an A rating. Let's get to the As a small uh, point of personal privilege, I want to acknowledge, um, in addition to the great leadership and teachers that we have at each of the schools, they are supported and captained by our dynamic team of assistant superintendents. And so I would like to acknowledge each, representing elementary division one, captained by none other than Dr. Kathleen Grigsby. <laughs> Division two is captained by the fearless, Mrs. Dion Woody. <laughs> Representing our middle school division, the dynamic Dr. Marvin Grayer. <laughs> and leading our high school school district, uh, we oh, have yeah. the none other than <laughs> Mrs. Lakeisha Marshall. -Tons. You know that's how they act. <laughs> we appreciate that it takes uh, a dynamic team, and so to uh, each of our assistant superintendents who work so hard to be in schools and to provide the leadership 
Um, you all are a great team, and we want to carry Dr. Green's vision forward. So we're shooting after that B. Principals, do we have your support in getting us there? Oh, yeah. We were going to get there. Thank you all for this opportunity to acknowledge our dynamic leaders. I want to thank you again, Dr. Cormack, just for your leadership and your continued support of the work that it takes to uh, steward this district and, and align all of our practices and our efforts. Um, board members, this is, I've said it before and I'll, I'll keep saying it, this is a, a really important milestone for us. Um, you know, whether folks want to acknowledge it or not, with this improved rating, uh, JPS is no longer considered a low performing district. And, and uh, as I stated before, and we'll hear more about the uh, analysis of our, our state test scores and, and um, performance this past year, we, we know, we're very clear that we've got, still got a lot of work to do. We, we know this. And, and I know that these leaders, all of these leaders in this room and others who couldn't be with us this evening, they get it. Um, they've been working really hard. They're committed to making change happen, not years from now, but right now. Yeah. Um, they understand the urgency. They understand the, the challenges of leading the change and transformation. And, and they're making it, they're proving what some probably believe is impossible. They're proving that it's possible. And so I have so much appreciation for all of these amazing educators, these amazing leader, leaders here, and all of the educators throughout our district, all the families that have helped us to get to where we are and those who will help us to continue on and understanding that um, it's our time. It's on our watch. We don't have a choice. Um, so just really, really lots of uh, love for this team and for what we've accomplished and what we're yet to accomplish. So we know that we've still got lots of work to do and um, we know that it's our time to make it happen. So Mrs. Blackshear will come later and um, help us to explore some of that data and, and um, spark more discussion on some of the opportunities that we have for continued growth. And now moving forward, um, board members, every year in October, every year, Every year in October, Jackson Public Schools proudly participates in the National Principals Month to celebrate and advocate for our building level administrators whose leadership is essential for achieving individual scholar success, um, which leads to overall school community well-being. And as you can see by the improved performance at the vast majority of our schools, JPS principals continue to raise academic standards and to create the necessary culture for our schools to succeed. And through collaboration with their school community stakeholders, our principals are delivering on the JPS vision to prepare scholars to achieve globally, to contribute locally, and to be fulfilled individually. Please join us as we honor them for their vision for their leadership and for their dedication to providing transformative learning experiences for all JPS scholars. <laughs> Principals, administrators, we can't say enough. We can't say thank you enough. And so um, we hope that we will show it, show our love and appreciation for you. And now, board members, I'm pleased to revive our tradition of recognizing one of our amazing scholars for exhibiting our core values. This scholar recently received the Caught Being Good Award for his efforts to ensure that the school campus was clean during their achievement activity. At this time, I invite our People's Middle School Principal, Dr. Spurgeon Banyard, 
um, to the podium who will uh, join us to, to tell us a bit more about this amazing People's Middle School Scholar, Dr. Banyer. Thank you, Dr. Green. Good evening, board members, uh, parents, and guests. Uh, this student exemplifies everything about People's Middle School. Anybody know me know that I'm OCD. I believe in everything <laughs> being structured, organized, and clean. And uh, this young man, he sees me picking up uh, paper and trash off the campus throughout the building when students uh, drop things down. And he just picked it up uh, behind me. So uh, I think we was at uh, Forest Hill, a, a principal meeting last week, and my teachers realized and recognized this young man as well. And so pretty much, they uh, took pictures of him doing that, and that's why we uh, got him for caught being good. Hmm. But I also want to say about this young man that on the uh, map assessment for ELA, he grew from a 1A to a 3A, and on the map assessment, he grew from a 2A to a 4A. So not only, not, not only, Not only he, he's shy, y'all, so don't you know just look over there. He's a shy young man. But uh but now he comes from a good father. Would you come up as well, Dad? Uh his, his dad, um, Jimmy Everson and everything. So we just want to recognize him and honor him and honor Dad as well. so nice to be recognizing and sharing some space with our, our young people, especially those who have a heart to serve their communities and um, for their own personal growth. And so again, let's, let's give this young man another round of applause. And with that, Vice President Hilliard, that, this concludes my remarks. I turn the meeting back over to you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Green, for presenting such an exciting report. Uh, I, I think this is something that we all have waited for since we joined the board. <laughs> we have all been waiting to hear that term that, you know, we are not about to get on that state stay to remain on this state bad list. Mm -hmm. uh, and we appreciate so very, very much all of the hard work that uh, each person, each of you, has put into this. You know, which is it's so exciting to hear this. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and now I don't have to keep asking that question that I like to ask all the time about our being there in, on the bottom. And well, it's just so exciting. I am just overcome with joy. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm a graduate of uh, Jim Hill High School, Jackson Public Schools. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, oh, <laughs> I just do what? <laughs> Comments? I just want to say, I am just up here full, just completely full, just as a parent of Jackson Public Schools and six of my babies graduating and fighting through the madness that our children were not. They are. 
always have been, and I've saw it from the beginning, and I just thank God that now the world can get to see it and celebrate with us and celebrate our babies with us, and they can see it for themselves. They will feel it for themselves. We're not on the bottom. Is I guess the song used to say, I started on the bottom, now we're here. We are here, and we're going up, up, up. And I'm so excited to be on this team. I feel like I'm at a football game tonight. I'm like, yes. So thank you all for all that you all do. Well, we are all so excited that we're messing around here at church up in here. <laughs> That's so around. very excited about the accomplishments. And we know and that it could not have been done without the hard work, the dedication of each one of you. That's so right. we, we thank you yes. so very much. Thank you. OK, um, any other comments? Okay, thank you yes. again. <laughs> yes, oh, okay. All right, Jean. <laughs> thank you. Okay, uh, do we have any participants or public comments? Board members, we have one person who signed up to address you, um, McKinney Rainey. Okay, we have uh, one person. Yes. Okay, uh, community members who would like to make public comments should email their request to roswilliams at jackson.k12.ms.us no later than 4 p.m. the day of the meeting or appear in person in the boardroom no later than 5.15 p.m. the day of the meeting. Attorney Dorian. Okay. McKinney Rainey would like to address you regarding LGBTQ. McKinney Rainey. Or I also have Guy or Rob Hill. Guy or Rob Hill. Okay. Well, I guess the persons that were planning to speak are overcome with joy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Uh, okay. Next, we have inform information only items. Uh, Sandra Robinson, Executive Director of Facilities and Operations. Good evening. Good evening. Mrs. Hilliard, uh, Dr. Green, board members. We have the pleasure of, thank you, pleasure of providing the bond update at the for, first board meeting of each meeting. In tonight's presentation, we will provide the construction updates, the bond financial report, and the timeline for completion. Ms. Franklin will, give, will start us off with the construction updates for Dawson, North Jackson, Sykes, and Walton. Good evening, board members. As you can see from our short list, we're winding down in our bond projects. Tonight we'll be looking at uh, some of our elementary um, schools where we're closing out restrooms. At Dawson Elementary, this is a uh, uh, boys and girls restrooms uh, that have been completed. They've received all new updated plumbing inside the chase walls, new uh, ceramic wall tile and floor tile, updated LED lighting, uh, all new plumbing fixtures, new solid plastic partitions, all new mirrors and accessories. The only two things that we're still waiting on in, these, in this set of restrooms are our new windows to come in 
and the new doors to be installed, the exterior doors. At North Jackson Elementary School, we finished a second and third set of student restrooms. They've received all new updated plumbing, uh, new wall tile and floor tile, all new plumbing fixtures, accessories, updated LED lighting, and solid plastic partitions. At Sykes Elementary School, we were able to replace all of the millwork in the kindergarten classrooms. The photo on the left, we see the condition of the previous millwork. In the right, we see the updated cabinets with solid surface countertops and a stainless sink. At Walton Elementary, this is our third set of student restrooms. Uh, the, all of the plumbing inside the chase walls is complete. At this stage, um, the epoxy floors are complete also. Contractors have installed, it, the, installed the plumbing, ceramic wall tile, and they're working on finishing out the paint and installing the partitions. Next, Ms. Robinson will give us an update on our financials. As Ms. Franklin shared, the list of, of projects is a little short uh, this week. Um, but because we are wrapping these projects up and finally bring, bringing the bond to a close. Um, as of uh, September 29th, we've expended 80% uh, of the bond funds. That's up from 76.4 from the September 6th bond eight update that we provided. The next three slides provide a um, school by school breakdown of the financials, given the budget, the um, amount expended, the amount encumbered, and the budget balance. We do want to pay attention to the third page of this. If you look at the uh, row that shows the, ball, the, the baseball softball complex, we have um, transferred the funds to encumber almost $5 million. That includes the um, construction fees as well as the AE fees. And we, will, we look to uh, encumber those funds for the project uh, this week. And the notice to proceed will be issued on Thursday at the pre-construction meeting for the baseball softball complex. So we're excited to get that project kicked off. Um, this slide gives a, a completion for the bond um, for the major projects that are remaining. The bar is still performing arts. We have an ex expected completion date of October 14th. Um, that same date for John Hopkins exterior renovations. Walton Restroom has a completion, uh, projected completion date of October 31st. Forest Hill JROTC renovations, November 1st. Provine Academy Space upgrades, uh, November the 30th. Uh, Hughes Field improvements, December 26th. And the baseball softball com complex were projected to complete that by April um, 2023. So we're excited to get these projects under completion. Um, the timeline for comp completion for some bond ESSER projects at the last board meeting we did define that there are a few projects that we're going to blend together the bond and ESSER funds. Two of those projects are McLeod Renovations and Wells APAC. We will begin to advertise those projects. Um, we have a projected start date of January 2023 for McLeod and February 2023 for Wells APAC with both of those uh, projected completion to be August 2023. Uh, for new Newell Field, we, um, on the agenda tonight, we're rejecting all bids for Newell Field, but we will be presenting at the November 1st bo uh, board meeting uh, an update on how we're going to rebid uh, the project and get it done in phases. We will also present at the next board meeting our plan for um, using bond and ESSER funds for Bailey APAC. Um, so we're excited to, to be able to use ESSER funds, like we said, in order to complete those uh, bond projects and that didn't have enough mo money in the bond to, uh, to get those completed. That concludes our presentation. Any questions? Board members, are there questions, comments? How are you, we feeling about our overall schedule and move towards completion as we're coming nearer to the end <clears throat> of this bond? Um, we're feeling good. Um, we know there were major delays. We're still denoting what those delays were. We're working with the bond um, attorneys to make sure um, that we're still um, um, okay financially as far as the time frame for expending everything. But we are still working with uh, Mr. Burke and also Ms. Purnell to make sure that we're on target 
to complete these projects by. And we do project for a baseball softball, April 2023, and then we'll be uh, making some um, more updates to you for Newell Field next, next month. Great. I'll add to that. Um, you know, uh, obviously we, we, the plan was to have had all of these completed. Um, at the same time, our, bless you, at the same time, our, our needs um, and the context um, in which we're working have, have greatly shifted. Um, over the course of the bond um, program. And so while pro, uh, projects were scoped in a particular way for five, whatever it was, five years ago, four years ago, five years ago, um, you know, we find ourselves in a very different market. market. Um, the costs of these materials and equipment and labor, all of this um, has, has um, has shifted upward just drastically, and so it's caused us to rethink um, our plans. At the same time, blessing and curse, the ESER dollars are available to help to augment uh, some of what the, the funding that we have in the bond, and so we'll, we'll share some more of those plans, um, you know, uh, in, in short order. So while, you know, we certainly would like to have completed projects sooner, um, you know, we, like others, have, have just had to uh, bear with and deal with and manage through uh, a lot of the, the challenges in the construction um, field and market that um, have impacted our, our plans. So um, at the end of the day, we'll have some, um, some pretty remarkable um, improvements in several, several, several buildings um, and facilities. To, to use for our scholars. It's exciting to see, and just kudos to the whole team and all the hard work that's been done to get us here. When we were out there pitching this to the voters to mm -hmm. get them to approve it, uh, so many doubted, and, and that was the, the naysayers. They said, you, you know, then they kept pointing to previous bonds and things mm -hmm. like this. It is so important. And as Dr. Seaback has reminded us, it won't be that long before we need to go back to them to do another and show that we were good stewards of this money and that we we'll, we need their support in the future. Yeah, and to that, um, it'll it'll be um, it'll be pretty compelling for us to name the projects that either were never scoped out in the original bond program or where we've been able to expand on and do more. Um, I know there are some schools that have gotten more uh, in the way of renovations or, or um, options um, because we were able to do that and because we, we did have some um, or, or benefited from some bond um, revenues. Uh, not to mention, the again, the, the ESER funds that we've been able to mobilize and, and uh, leverage as well. So we'll be able to, to brag on some, uh, some additional projects that were never originally scoped. Yeah. Thank you, ladies, as always. Thank Appreciate you. you. Are there other, any other questions, comments, before we release them? <laughs> <laughs> you all have done a great job. We appreciate you. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Okay, next on the information items only, we have a review of rental agreement between Jackson Public Schools and the Mississippi Department of Agriculture and Commerce 2023 high school graduation exercises. And I believe that's Lakeisha. Thank you. <laughs> Great evening, Dr. Green, Vice President Hilliard, board members. Um, the administration is requesting approval of the agreement between Jackson Public Schools and the Mississippi Department of Agriculture and Commerce for the 2023 high school mm -hmm. commencement ceremonies on Tuesday, May 30th and Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. Um, the Mississippi Coliseum is the most appropriate local facility um, because it provides adequate parking, seating, and traffic access to endure um, a smooth and enjoyable experience for our students, staff, and families. 
and we've held our commencement exercises um, at the Coliseum for the for 24 years. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions? Comments? Thank. Did you have a question? Comment. Okay. It feels like we're getting this done early this year. <laughs> we are. <laughs> early, early bird. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Marshall. <laughs> Next on the agenda, school year 2022 MAAP data update. And Ms. Lashears. In anticipation of 100% graduation. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> At least 90. Right. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, yeah. Did I pronounce your name incorrectly? Black it's Shear. Latoya or Black Shear. It doesn't matter. I tell people <laughs> Black Crayon Shear Seals. It's okay. okay. <laughs> so, Thank you. Not a problem. Good evening, <laughs> Vice President, Miss he Dr. Heer, uh, Dr. board members, JPS family and friends. Tonight, I am honored to share with you our spring 2022 accountability data. You know, cookers. Cookers didn't work well with me. So before I uh, begin doing so, I want to remind everyone of our vision, mission, and our core values, and that's what you see here projected. At Jackson Public School, we prepare scholars to achieve globally, to contribute locally, and be fulfilled individually. At Jackson Public School, we develop scholars through world-class learning experience to obtain an exceptional knowledge base, critical and relevant skill set, and the necessary disposition for great success. <coughs> now, I've highlighted the critical and relevant skill set because we believe in the Office of Data and Accountability, it is one of our roles is to assist your super, assistant superintendents in developing our leaders and our teachers in the area of data. Also, lastly, our core value throughout this presentation, you will see a focus on equity, excellent growth mindset, and relevance. So the purpose of this presentation is to provide you with a high-level overview of our spring 2022 map data, discuss where we are in terms of proficiency, and we're going to outline a few steps um, and discuss where we are in terms and outline a few next steps in order for us to become a B-rated school district next year. Amen. So just to remind everyone, this slide represents the components or the indicators of the accountability model for a one-point schools and districts with an EL indicator. We are awarded um, a point for all, for any scholar that scores a proficient and advanced and for proficiency with ELA, math, and science. We're also awarded points for growth, growing our students from one year to the next. Graduation rate is included in that model. Acceleration uh, for performance and participation, AP courses, dual credit, all of that, as well as our ACT is in the model. Those students that are uh, meeting benchmark readiness, we are awarded a point, and of course, um, progress to proficiency for our EL. So just for a minute, allow me to take you down memory lane. I won't be here very long. <laughs> just won't, not long. So for three years, as you can see, 2016 to 17, we were an F rated district with our lowest total points in 2017, looming a state takeover, and then in 2019, ratings were frozen for 2020 and 2021 due to the pandemic. So we maintain that D rating in 2021. But now in the tunes of the famous group, the McFadden and the Whitehead, y'all know that song? Ain't no stopping us now, we're on the move. So we're right at a 569 with a, a letter grade of a C. So how did we yield the 569? This slide here represents the components for um, English. You have proficiency, growth for all. I included the year of 2018. However, I just will kind of discuss 2019 to 2022 because 2019 was the last official time we received ratings, okay? 
Now, you'll see that we increased our proficiency by a tenth for ELA. We reached our all-time high in growth for all students and growth for low 25 as well. And you'll also note that we outpaced the state in our growth low 25. Mm -hmm. For mathematics, again, we have acknowledged that our growth for opportunity is mathematics because we decreased by a little over 2%. Again, we reached an all-time high in our growth for all students and our growth low 25. Again, outpacing the state at 73.4% for our growth low 25. Now, we do understand that our proficiency is not where we want it to be. However, we are very proud because we are moving or growing all of our scholars to proficiency. And that's evident in our growth for all and our growth for low 25. Now, our science. So our science, you'll actually see it increased by a little over seven-tenths of a point. U.S. history, I would definitely say showed out. Uh, reached an all-time high of 48% for proficiency. And then we also have our English learners. We took a slight decline or decrease there. Last but not least, some other accountability components or indicators of the model. You've heard a lot about our graduation rate. Uh, that's projected here, but we also want to call out our graduation. If you look in 2018, you'll see that there were a 12-point gap. Each year we've closed that gap because we've gone from 12 to 9.8 percent, a little over 8 percent, and now we are on the heels of the state with just a little over 3 percent gap. Our acceleration, you actually see there, we grew a little over 17th percent as well as our college and career, which is our ACT, we increased a little over 3%. Now, just a, some, a summation real quick. You'll see here that we are a 569. We increased 65 points from 2018-19 to this year. We're 33 points away from a B. In 2018-19, you'll actually see that we had a little over 43% of our schools to be C, rated successful, C and above. This year, we're proud to say that we are right at 64% of our schools rated as a C or above. Awesome. Very exciting. <laughs> now, I think Dr. Cormack said in our last principal meeting, there's no turning back now. So with that being said, we want to provide you tonight a few steps for our roadmap to a B. We feel the need to review our district and school's goals based on our 2020 MAP data. Why are we doing that? Simply because many of our schools have already met that goal. So we need to make sure that we increase that level to ensure we maintain the rate of progress. Mm -hmm. So that means that we're going to continue requiring our teachers, our students, everyone to set school-wide goals. We're going to continue to review our MAP data points to determine strengths and opportunity for growth. But we're going to dig deep. We're going to disaggregate it by the grade level, the subject, the teacher, the student. Get all down in the weeds of it. Continue to analyze our subgroup data to identify groups of students that need additional support. And when we talk about those students that need additional support, we're not just talking about those students that are in intervention or our low 25. We're talking about those scholars that are, uh, need acceleration or enrichment. Because just in case you didn't know, we had 154 of our scholars to score a perfect score on the set of tests. So it's very important that we maintain that rate of progress. Last but not least. Excuse me. Repeat that statement. Well, I want to make sure I heard it. So of course, we had 154 scholars to score a perfect score on the state assessment. And they came, and they didn't just come from our special program schools. They were spread throughout our district. So we're excited about Thank that. You. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, we're going to review and plan professional development around our writing data. We understand that that is an opportunity for growth and uh, those standards that we've identified as well. 
We're going to promote the district, uh, the use of district and state resources. We have purchased some amazing resources for our teachers to use. So we're really promoting, providing follow-up professional development so they can use them. And the state has also provided what we really enjoy and parents have spoke highly about, which is the online tutoring, which is paper, if you all haven't heard about it as well. Mm. Uh, last but not least, any of our schools that are low performing, we're going to conduct a root cause analysis, some intense training to ensure they're not performing next year, not low, low performing, performing next year. Any questions or mm. comments? Amazing. Before, board members, before you um, sh share any questions or comments, just two additional comments. First off, uh, a huge thanks to Ms. Black, Mrs. Blackshear and our data team for their continued work in disaggregating, analyzing, uh, presenting, and keeping data in front of us. Um, and empowering all of us, not just the few, the twos and fews of us, but, but the entire district team in seeing ourselves, seeing our work, and, and being more strategic and thoughtful in how we continue in our efforts to improve and, and to grow our district. So first, want to give you thanks and kudos for your, your continued work, wonderful work. Uh, two big points, uh, board members. Um, in other districts where I've been, um, and this ties to one of the points that Mrs. Blackshear made. Um, we, there's been uh, a, a piece of the conversation has been on um, the number or percent of scholars who have uh, uh, earned advanced, who have achieved level of advance on the, and so here it would be the five, I guess, on the, mm -hmm. on the state test. And while um, we called out the scholars who uh, had perfect scores on the assessment. One of the things that I'm looking forward to lifting up are the numbers of scholars who not only passed, who not only made proficient on the test, but who were advanced on the test and, and demonstrate that level of mastery of their um, uh, grade level uh, skills and knowledge. And so that's something that I, I'm, I'm looking forward to just kind of highlighting because we have them. We have many of them, and so want to continue to lift that up, especially in those schools where they've got a bit higher proficiency levels. It's, it's now time and, and part of their work and, and resetting uh, expectations for them is growing that advanced population. Mm -hmm. you've, you've now got, you know, for the Obamas and McWillies and several other schools that have much higher proficiency levels than other schools in the district, What's the, what's the percentage of scholars that advance? Just another way for us to keep pushing and challenging and supporting our schools and lifting higher. Um, and the other thing just to lift up is um, we, we know that, um, uh, like many other districts, many schools in other districts, that um, growth and, and as you saw, our growth of our scholars performing at the, in the lowest, 20, lowest quarter, lowest percentile, um, we know that um, a lot of our success from this past year was fueled by growth. Scholars that made considerable growth, whether they reached proficiency or advanced or not. Right. And we celebrate those scholars, and we know that you've got to make growth in order to get to proficiency, advanced, or where, what have you. In addition to the growth, we're really uh, channeling um, and, and narrowing our focus to ensure that scholars actually get above the hump, get over that hump. There, I don't know what the percentage was, but I know in previous conversations, many scholars that are sitting right there at the cusp, right there, they, they grew, they've improved, but they didn't quite get over that, that lined into proficiency. And so that's something that I know um, through the, the data team support, we'll have clear line of sight to those scholars, clear line of sight to the specific skills, the specific concepts where we can grow in a school, in a grade level, in a particular subject area, and how we can support folks in getting there. And so just want to kind of lift up some of the conversations that our team has been having all throughout the district and, and um, some of the protocols around studying student work, studying lesson plans, just to get smarter and, and more strategic in how we achieve what years ago might have seemed like a pipe dream, but we're within spitting distance of a letter, of a letter B. 
And, and so we want to demystify and debunk the kind of how you get there. There's a whole roadmap that we're developing, have developed actually, in order to get there. So I just wanted to lift those up. Thank you for further elaborating on that, uh, Dr. Green, in terms of how we're going to do this. Because I'm sure that each of us is um, thinking uh, how we can move on up a little higher. Yes. It's a song. It was that a thought? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Are there other comments or questions? I have one quick question. Yes. So you said 33 points away from a B. Yes. How many points away from an A? So I didn't calculate that. I, didn't, I did not calculate you to, that. You need to know that number. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I will definitely get that. Mm -hmm. oh, did you say 33 or 24? No, it's 33, 33 away from a B. Away from a B. I, I got that. That's and what I'll question. do is I'll get that and report it back. The superintendent just said immediately before it was released, how close are we going to be now? So we made sure to outline that. Amen. But I will get that information to you. Amen. <laughs> okay. Congratulations, everybody. It feels so good to be here. And yeah. when we had that press conference, there were multiple times I felt really emotional and overwhelmed about where we were after everything we've gone through as a school district. And boy, it's a testimony to this team uh, and to the leadership and to our principals and teachers and to our young scholars. It is an amazing feeling. Congratulations. Amen. Thank you. So Dr. Cormack, it, oh. The team, I'm sorry, the team <laughs> has provided us with the number. Uh -oh. We are one, 185 away from an A. Man. Which is definitely within reach. Absolutely it is. Chum change. Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. We already have over 60, right at 60% of our scholars sitting at 345. Hmm. Well. Chum change. Huh? Teamwork. Man. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are there other questions? Yes. Uh, it's just a restatement. Uh, you've made a statement, a small statement, about the importance of our You made a small statement about the importance of, you didn't use the word information, but you used another word, uh, data, I think. The importance of looking at the data yes, sir. and providing it to, could you, mm -hmm. would, is, would it be too much of a challenge to just repeat that statement? So if I'm understanding correctly, that was a part of the mission statement uh -huh. in our office. Uh -huh. We uh, ensure that we provide accurate and timely data and uh -huh. support the assistant superintendent with working and developing our leaders and our teachers around data so they can get the data and use that data to inform their decisions. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Are there other comments or questions? If not, we thank you. Thank you so much. Very much. Very good. Okay. Now we will move to information action items and first on the agenda is approval of PBIS rewards program. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Superintendent Dr. Green, Board Vice President Ms. Hilliard, Board Members. The administration recommends approval of PBIS rewards a PBIS management system that will enable all schools to better align on the implementation of best practices and monitoring of data to improve student outcomes. Any questions? Okay. Are there questions, board members, comments? If no questions or comments, um, thank you so very much. Ms. Hilliard, I move that we approve um, 
uh, information action item A, approval of PBIS awards. Second. Okay. It has been properly moved and second that we would accept information item A. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Are there any nays? The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And now we move to <coughs> Dr. Smith. All right, great evening for Pres Board Vice President, Ms. Fulier, members of the board, Superintendent Green and our JPS family. The administration is presented for information action, the approval to award RFP 2022-09, our district benchmark and formative assessment services for K-2 to instructure as a part of the proposal, to, I'm sorry. Yeah, the district requests an online platform to be used to administer benchmark and interim assessments to K through second grade. The data gathered from the K-2 assessments will enable schools to track students' performance on priority standards prior to entering third grade. Teachers will have a usage of test banks to create more rigorous, high quality, standard aligned assessments to determine mastery of standards. Mm -hmm. Teachers will also be able to use the data to make necessary adjustments to their uh, instructional practices, such as what type of formative assessments they will use and checks for understanding. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Are there questions? I do have a, just a, a quick one. Uh, it looks, yes. Dr. Smith, um, as if maybe we only had two bids for this and one, the one that we're approving tonight was significantly higher than the other one. And I, I see the reasoning. I'm just wondering if you could speak to that. And um, it looks like maybe Instructure is a new company we're doing business with, or we've used Instructure before. We are I currently so. using Instructure for our third through That's eighth right. grade in high school. But with, um, there is also a predictive study that goes along with instructor as well that helps us to have a better, closer prediction, prediction of how our uh, students will do on MAP. And so uh, with the other company, we in the evaluation process, we noticed that some of the, some of the, uh, the items that were used in the demo were not completely aligned to the standards that we saw. And so um, with that piece of it and then just ensuring that we have uh, the same type of data sets that we get so that we'll be able to track those standards. So when you're looking at K-1 and 2, there are some standards that we've identified in third grade that students must know and be able to do. And so we'll be able to scaffold down to see exactly how those standards are, um, are measuring up as, as students are uh, progressing to the third grade. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are there other questions, comments? Thank you, Dr. Smith. Okay, um, is there a motion to accept her report? I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion Aye. passes. Okay, um, approval of agreement between the Mississippi School for Death and the blind and the Mississippi Department of Education and the Jackson Public School District. And that is Dr. Bingham Gibbs. Good evening, <laughs> Board Vice President, Board Members, Dr. Green and the JPS family. The Office of Exceptional Education Services is presenting to the Board for approval of an agreement with the Mississippi Schools for the Deaf and the Blind and the Mississippi Department of Education. The purpose of this agreement is to establish a partnership between MSDB and JPSD in providing assessments, additional services, and educational opportunities to the visually impaired, deaf, hard of hearing, or deaf blind students enrolled in either the Mississippi Department or the Mississippi School for Deaf and Blind or the JPS School District. The mission of this partnership is to provide an academically energizing environment where students can earn additional high school credits have access to available diploma options, and the Mississippi Department of Education, the MS MSDB, and JPSD can collaborate to provide needed assessments not readily available at either school sites. Okay. Are there questions? Comments? 
I just want to give one additional comment. I want to thank okay. Ms. Marshall Thomas um, for having a growth mindset with regards to this collaboration um, because the high school division is offering the additional credits for the Mississippi School of Deaf and Blind, as well as she saw the opportunities for our scholars to receive mm -hmm. additional um, mm -hmm. sign language, for example, with additional language credits, mm -hmm. things the partnership can bring for both schools. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, glad to see it come Excellent. across the table. Yeah. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Other comments, questions? Is there a motion to approve this information? So moved. Second. <laughs> Been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. No nays. There being none, the motion's approved. All right. The next item on the agenda is Dr. Cormack. Good evening once again. Um, the administration is recommending the approval of an amended agreement with Reconstruction and the Jackson Public School District. Reconstruction is an after-school program that was previously approved on the October 20th meeting. Um, this amended language would protect the proprietary curriculum uh, materials against reproduction um, outside of use for the after-school program. Um, and we have aligned um, on the language uh, in order to do so. So it's a, a fairly simple uh, amendment, but we recommend your approval. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cormack. Uh, board members, are there any questions or comments? Is there a motion to approve information action item D? That's the move. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, there being no nays, the motion is passed. All right, now we move to approval of agreement between Jackson State University, the Federal TRIO Program for After School, and the Jackson Public School District. And this is, you do it for Samicia? Okay. I am, yes ma'am. All right. I have the Thank pleasure you. of standing again for Dr. Samisa Stokes, who leads our <laughs> Office of Innovative Strategy. The administration is recommending uh, the approval of an agreement uh, with Jackson State University, the I love, uh, to support the federal TRIO program. The federal TRIO programs have a long history of supporting uh, upward bound and upward bound math and science programming uh, that supports first generation college students. Uh, we were excited to partner with Dr. Mitchell Shears, who secured this federal grant. Um, and reached out to our Office of Innovative Strategy to collaborate uh, on after-school programming that will support our middle and secondary scholars, uh, many of whom will be first-generation college students. And so the programming uh, sets them on a pathway to prepare uh, for STEM offerings, STEM careers and pathways, and also um, various kinds of preparation uh, that are very germane and supportive of first-generation college students. So we urge your support. Thank you. That's exciting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, are there questions of Dr. Cormack? Go Tigers. <laughs> it's like a great program. I'm glad to see our old friend Dr. Shears is still staying connected and keeping us in, in good partnership with my employer, Jackson State University. Very much so. <laughs> Very much Get so. Get that plug in. Thank you. All right. Are there other comments, questions? Is there a motion to approve item E? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, there being no nays, the motion is approved. All right. Uh, consent agenda item finance. Uh, before we uh, go into this, I want to point out two items in this section that we would like to get additional information on from Dr. Burks. Uh, that's item B and D. Good evening, board. Good evening. Vice President Hilliard, Dr. Green, audience. 
Uh, item B uh, would be the approval of the finance, final amended budgets for the fiscal year 21-22. This is a, a uh, the administration is recommending the board approve the final amended budget for the fiscal year 21-22. This is uh, a requirement by Mississippi statute that the board spread in its minutes the final approval, the final approved budget at the end of the year uh, by October 15th. So we're, this is meeting that requirement. Okay. And then item uh, item B, I mean item D, I'm sorry, is the approval, it, it builds on a, a little bit of what was given in the bond update related to the Newell Field Project. The administration is very committed to this project being completed. Uh, unfortunately, when it was bid, it was bid, um, the bids came back, there were two bids and the, the lowest bid was 8.3 million dollars which was uh, significantly more than what was presented to you as a budget recommendation um, with that in mind uh, and with the amount of money that's remaining in the bond we did not feel comfortable accepting that uh, bid so it's being recommended for uh, uh, to be rebid or for rejection as an item it will come back to you as Ms. Uh, Robinson said in parts we're looking for a strategy to get it done uh, that will taking into account the bond monies that we have uh, remaining, any bond money that comes back that is unencumbered as we finish up those other projects she listed, all those funds will be combined to complete this project. But we will continue the effort by looking at a strategy of breaking it into parts. Uh, there is a turf part, there is a bleacher part, there is some restroom innovations, uh, and there was a field house component. We will keep working to get that done and we'll be back in November with a more comprehensive plan of how we will get that done. But I just want, Dr. Green wanted me to speak to that and I wanted to give you some additional clarification. We are committed to that project. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you, you may stay. <laughs> may stay. Yes. Okay. Uh, stay. The consent agenda item finance. And I believe each one of those we, list, we will listen. Let me take them all again. We would take, mm hmm uh, board members, mm -hmm. uh, the consent agenda item finance, all of the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously and we've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. If there are no further questions, the board members, are there further questions? If there are no further questions, a motion to approve consent agenda item finance is in order. So moved. Second. Okay, it has been moved by board member Leticia and second by board member Robbie. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Are there? Okay, uh, any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. So now we are down to consent. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Burt. Uh, we're down to consent agenda item general. Um, all of the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously and we've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. If there are no further questions, board members, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items? I move that we approve consent agenda items general. Second. It has been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, no nays, there being none, the motion is approved. And next on the agenda, we have the consent agenda items personnel. All of the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously, and we've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. If there are no further questions, Board members, are there further questions? 
Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, personnel? So moved. Second. Okay, it has been moved by board member Thompson, second by board member Johnson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. no, are there any nays? No nays. There being none, the motion is approved. Is there a consideration to hold an executive session? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Dr. Green, okay. Uh, there is um, a motion, there is consideration, rather, to hold an executive session. Is there a motion to close this meeting to consider the needs to go into executive session? I so move. Second. Okay, it has been moved by board member figures, second by uh, Thompson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Um, there being no, none, no nays, is there a motion? We're going to um, close the meeting. We will close this session out. Mm -hmm. I'll get it right eventually. <laughs> uh, close the session out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for attending. You're here. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Hayard. Um, and uh, Attorney Moore, um, uh, just again, there is a. I know there's a public comment process, and I know you listed the policies, <laughs> the amendments. Um, uh, just again, these are policies, and there's an engagement process, and just. The, the changes that are being proposed. <laughs> this one up for amendment is policy AEAA slash GADR, which is paid legal holidays. This policy was recommended for amendment to add in Juneteenth as a paid legal holiday, reflecting the new um, federal uh, holiday. Next was AFAA, EBAA, emergency closing of schools. The procedures, we uh, 